Good morning, everyone, again, and welcome to Mount Carmel Bible Church. I'm Pastor Richard. It's a lovely Sunday morning. We've been busy here uh, the past weekend preparing for the uh, yard sale, getting the pavilion all cleaned up and ready to go, and then all of us packing our stuff up and bringing it here and unpacking it, laying it all out, and inviting the community to uh, we had a beautiful day, but it was busy. We were exhausted at the end of the day. We had a lot of things going on. And we're, we're not going to slow down anytime soon. We all know this. We got next weekend off, and then the following weekend, we're right back in it. Making ice cream for our ice cream sales. Then the following weekend, we're selling that ice cream. And we've got... Last I checked, there was over 3,000 people have seen the post, the one post about ice cream sales. So I'm expecting, you know, I've been told and warned that we're going to sell out real quick that Saturday morning, which is a good thing, but we're going to be busy. We got uh, new freezers for the occasion. We've got some new volunteers, hopefully more than just a few to get this set up and, and running. But we've got a lot of things going on. Besides that, the SOS ministry is starting, and that'll be that, uh, that Saturday that we do the sales as well. So with all that being said, it is summer now. Schools are going to be out. we got a lot of things to do at our homes, get our yards cleaned up, ready to go. Our plates are full. We got a lot of things going on. We're busy. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. When things get busy, sometimes our relationships suffer. When we're running all over the place trying to get things done, we tend to forget about our friends, our neighbors, and sometimes our family. Not really forgetting them on purpose, but we got things to do. We can't stop off and, and see somebody and spend time with them like we were able to spend time with each other yesterday at the yard sale after we got all, everything set up we got to spend time with each other talk with each other visit with each other but that is going to slow down when we're working on making ice cream we're going to be working when we're running around getting things ready for summer we're going to be running around getting ready, thing, ready for things in summer. We're not going to have the time to communicate with each other as we used to. So we have to start thinking about that and making more time. And of course, when we're busy, sometimes we start communicating less on the phone, less in person, and more in texts and emails. And that sometimes leads to conflict because we misinterpret what we're trying to say. Or maybe we're fast typing something to somebody and it's and send it just to get the basic information out. But we're not, you know, when they're receiving it, they could be receiving it and having a bad day themselves and misreading it. So communication with the combined with stressful activities and, and not a lot of time can make the situation worse and increase the chance of conflict. So there's some things we need to keep in mind when we're discussing things and possibly misinterpreting things, we need to start thinking about ways that we can make sure we're not Increasing conflict. Take some time to just stop texting, call. Pull over to the side of the road, call the person, say, hey, look, I just want to say, I'm really busy right now, but these are the things I'm trying to communicate with you. So we're not risking possibility of miscommunication and in increasing conflict. Find ways to remove the barriers in communication. Taking extra time. And I know it's hard when we're extremely busy. 
But it's important to communicate with each other, to take the time to listen to each other. I'm saying, I need this done. I need you to do this. Well, maybe you've got other things going on, too, that I'm not hearing, I'm not realizing. So we can talk to each other, spend a little time, calm down, take the barriers away, stop text <coughs> as much, and talk. Great time to do that is right after church or before church if you get here in time. And again, Larry's not here. I, I was going to make fun of him for that. <laughs> I, can't, I can't make fun of him when he's not here and he's not feeling well. So, But there's other ways we can work together to get through those, those barriers. Just simple conversations. Working on Res resolving a conflict. And there's always another way we can make each other a sandwich. What am I talking about? <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not, I haven't been a pastor very long, but I haven't realized and learned from the past situations. What I want to get through to you people, especially some of you people, I'll talk about food. <laughs> that works. People are going to get that. So, one of the classes I took, uh, in, in, actually in the military, they talked to us about um, a compliment sandwich. Whenever you have a problem with somebody, you talk to them privately or you know in a group setting. You say something good about them, and then you say something that they could work on, and then something good about them. For example, Destiny, uh -uh. your hair is beautiful today. I, I know you spent a lot of time on it. Your B.O. is terrible, but I love the way you put your clothes together. It's just, it's just what it is. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get punished for that. You know, I'm kidding. I'm just putting that out. She has to ride home with you. No. Maybe she's going to hurt me later. Oh. But that's, that's an example, right? <laughs> she's going to hurt me later. You say something nice about them, and then you say the thing that's bothering you about them, and then you say something else nice about them. Now, what does that really do? Besides, it makes the person that you're trying to get through the problem with more receptive to hearing what they need to work on, right? But it also reminds you that the person that you're having a problem with has value and is important to you and your organization. So when you talk to somebody, by approaching them, giving them a compliment, <coughs> you're opening them up to listen to what, you, what else you have to say. Hey, you're doing a really great job with this project, and you know, it's, it's coming through, you've got a lot of things going on, and it's really working. Maybe we can help you get a little bit more organized in this part of it, or help us in a, in a different direction, and then get you up to the, the standards that we know you're at. It's a way to build somebody up to resolve our conflicts and remind each other that we love each other. We have value. We have things that we're going to work on together. So, what does this have to do with church, besides our relationships with each other? Well, don't we also have a personal relationship with God? When we get busy in our life, when we're running around trying to get ready for a yard sale or for ice cream sale, or get the kids to a pool so that they'll stop you nagging us, when we're running around with life, sometimes we'll let our relationship slide. And the relationship with God is also one that suffers. Sometimes we won't take as much time reading the Bible and listening to Him, or we'll spend less time praying and praising Him. Instead, we'll be talking to him and whining about how our life is going. 
not that we shouldn't be asking for help, not that we shouldn't be relying on the Lord, but we stop thinking of him as our Lord and start thinking of him as our personal helper or our genie. And that's not what his position is. If we spend more time listening to him, studying the Bible, hearing his word, then we can also start spending more time praying to him, praising him for all the good things that we have in our life, putting him in the position he deserves, working on our personal relationship with the Lord. By making time and being cautious not to blame God for our situation, for our troubles, for our busy schedule, we can rely on him to take some of our pain and our suffering and our stress away. By being still, taking the time, and working on, our, on the things that we have wrong with us, Reminding ourselves that these are our problems. There are other people that have more problems. Other people that have rougher times. People are going through health issues. People are going through war. People that have lost loved ones. Putting ourselves in perspective. Realizing that being a little late to get the kids to the pool is not as stressful as we make it out to be. Give God those stresses. Let those things go. And by making more time to listen to him and to talk to him, we can build our relationship with him back and stronger. So what happens when we make God a compliment sandwich? First of all, when we start to think about all the positive things that the Lord has done for us, when we start to think of how important he is in our lives, by all the blessings he's done. Like the song said that we sang earlier, he made everything. He knows the names of all the stars. He knows everything about everything. But he still remembers me. He still loves me. By really thinking about the compliment sandwich as it applies to the God, we can really understand the might and power and glory that he is. And that helps us put into perspective what we're asking. We, don't, we tend to want him to fix our problems the way we want them fixed. Instead of, Lord, take care of this for me. Help me through this. I'm not going to tell you how, because you've got the plan. Maybe I'm struggling with uh, my car's not working properly or you know, I'm not feeling well today. Lord, take this from me. Take this. Fix my car. Give me the money I need to fix my car. That's my answer to my problem. Lord, get me to where I need to go. That's letting him create the answer that's best for us. Maybe it's get a vehicle donated. Maybe it's have someone else take <coughs> care of transporting what needs to be transported. Maybe that's having my vehicle work again. That's giving him the opportunity to be who he is, God. And then, of course, you follow it up, telling him how great he is, Ask him to possibly resolve our problems or help us with our problems. And then reminding him how great he is and all the other things he's done for us. That helps us connect to him again. It helps us strengthen our relationship with the Lord. Remembering the Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. This is my God. And I will praise him, my father's God, and I will exalt him.
It's from Exodus 15.2. Old Testament. They knew God was their salvation. God was their hope. God was there for them in everything. A couple weeks ago, I finished reading uh, Psalms again. Uh, every now and then, I'll go back and read through it. And when I read it to the end, it really inspires me. It inspires me the, to the great who God is. It says, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sounds. Praise him with lutes and harps. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Now, I, I'm not a dancer, but we don't want to see that. But praise him with strings and pipes. Praise him with sound symbols, sounding symbols. Praise him with the loud crashing symbols. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Think about that. Everything should praise the Lord. Everything he created, he created for his glory. So, if you're going to let the Spirit take over when you're singing, let the Spirit take over. If you want to get in the aisles and dance, get in the aisles and dance. Praise the Lord with everything that you have. All of the time. When you start getting busy and overwhelmed with the world, with everything that's going on, with all the troubles that's falling around you, Stop. Take a minute. Go outside. Look around. He did that. He made this beautiful area to remind us how great he is and how much he deserves the glory. Praise the Lord. Take the time. Make the time. If you've been studying the Bible more, don't stop. If you still have a lot of things on your plate, other things can slide off. Don't let your relationship with the Lord slide off. Keep praying. Keep studying. Keep reading. Keep coming to church. Keep gathering with others. Keep doing what he has laid out for you. Helping others, showing their your love, showing his love through you to others. Because that is what it's all about. The Lord loves us. So we should love others. Let's go to Lord Brian. You, Lord, thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for the messages you've given us. Thank you for helping us to understand your glory, your power, your majesty, your strength, your awesomeness. Thank you for showing us how much you love us, and how much you care for us. And thank you for reminding us that you're always here with us, guiding us, strengthening us, loving us, taking away our burdens when we let you. Please continue to glorify us as we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay.